Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be, I've never felt like this before. Well, I've got an email here, a good success story, actually a really good success story from a guy who, guess what? He's read my book about 15 times. Like probably 90% of the people that find my work, he found me after a breakup had happened. And so what's really cool is he shares all of the experiences that he went through over the past year, becoming the best version of himself, getting in really great shape, and several of the success stories that he's had with women along the way, seducing them easily and effortlessly, exactly like I talk about in my book. And the best part is towards the end, he tells us about a woman who absolutely knocks his socks off. And so for the first time in his life, now he's dating the kind of high quality, beautiful woman that he's always wanted. And this girl happens to make about four times what he makes income wise. So for those of you that are struggling and wondering when it's going to pay off for you, this is a great example of what to do. And once again, as I've said many times over the years, the best success stories are always from the guys who totally immerse themselves in my book and they read it 10 to 15 times because things become instinctual when you do that. So I have a quote that I wrote on this topic and I'm going to go through his email and see what he did so successfully. And the quote says, what makes a man attractive in a woman's eyes? A man who embodies the qualities and essence of masculine energy which are purpose, drive, mission, accomplishing, breaking through barriers, overcoming obstacles, goals, succeeding and being his best self. A man who is either on the path to accomplishing his grandest goals and dreams and expects to succeed someday or a man who is living his grandest goals and dreams both embody the very definition and essence of masculine energy. It's about having a compelling vision, mission, and purpose and understanding and knowing why he wants it. Men who embody and live these qualities tend to be happier, healthier, more optimistic, more successful, and more fun to be around. Success is feeling like you are making progress even though you may be a decade or two away from ultimately accomplishing your grandest goals and dreams. The most attractive men to women are men who are hopeful about their future and doing something about it not men who have given up or who have no hope at all. If a man does not believe in his own ability to get what he wants in life, how can he possibly convince a woman that he can help them both become all that they are capable of being together? And that is the rub. It's a side effect of being your best self and obviously that is something that you learn in my book. But What I love about this email is this is a guy who just had the attitude, tell me what I need to do, I'll do it, I have faith in what you're teaching, and he went out and did it, and he got really predictable results. So I love reading emails like this, I love getting success stories like this because this guy followed the instructions, and he made it really easy on himself. You can tell he's had a lot of fucking fun over the last year, nothing but successes and winning And that's what happens. It's like what Confucius said. Success depends upon prior preparation. Without said preparation, there is sure to be failure. Guys who struggle and have a difficult time and do a lot of fucking up along the way, they usually read the book once or twice or they read it once or twice and then they encounter a woman they really like and they start hooking up and they go, I don't need to watch these fucking videos anymore. I don't need to read this book. I'm getting laid. Everything's great. I'm fucking awesome. I'm now the man. I can teach Corey a thing or two. And then a few months later, I need help. My girl dumped me. I don't know what to do. And you get the panicked emails from these guys and it's like, they didn't listen. I talk to them all the time when I do phone sessions with them or I do email coaching. And it's just this, the guys who struggle have not taken the time to learn the fundamentals. And all I can do is suggest you got to participate in your own rescue. You have to do the work. And if you do the work and you put the time in, you will be kicking ass like this guy is. So let's go through his email, shall we? He says, hello there, Coach Corey Wayne. Yes, I know. This is a long ass email. What's well, not too long? 
I hope you like it though and people can feel good about it. Your book and you have changed my life in every way possible. I would have never learned this by myself, he puts in big letters. Well, that's the advantage because most people don't have the time to figure this shit out. And I took a lot of time in my life to figure this stuff out and I went through a lot of pain and a lot of failure and a lot of fucking up. And the good thing about failing at anything in life is that it's the best way to learn. The more you do things, the more you're going to have failures and the more you can learn from your failures and the better you're going to get at it versus somebody who's just sitting on the sidelines thinking about it, hoping, wishing something would change. You have to take action. Like the Buddha said, faith without action is meaningless. I am forever thankful to you and our creator for putting me on your path. I have truly, I have applied literally everything you said to do. I originally found you when I was dumped by the one, my ex, who was a Mexican-American. She was an eight with a quality. In other words, I assume he's saying on a scale of one to ten looks wise, she was an eight. And overall quality was a seven. He says, yeah, fucking right. Like you say, I was shocked. Shocked, I tell you. I couldn't believe it as I had gotten her when I was overweight. And when she left me, I was in the best shape of my life. A nine, quality five, thinking about leaving soccer. I'm six feet tall and extremely handsome, as I'm always told. Well, looks will only get you so far. It'll get you in the door. But if you don't know what you're doing, if you don't know how to act like a man... You're going to fumble the fucking football. When I work with guys that are having problems in their marriages, 99.99% of them, they already have the, the therapist and the, they're already in marriage counseling. But you can have the best therapist and the best counselor in the world and if the guy is not acting like a man, if he's not embodying masculine energy and what it's all about, then he's not going to succeed. He's not – going to create attraction with his girlfriend or his wife you got to have the sexual polarity it's the differences that attract men and women to each other and when it comes to gay or lesbian relationships it's the difference in the masculine and feminine energy it doesn't matter physically what your body style is if your natural essence is masculinity and you're a woman you have to embody that masculinity if you're a masculine woman and you like to date feminine women if you're a lesbian then it's it's so predictable i work with lesbian or or gay couples it's it's one of them is not embodying their natural essence and you see the same patterns over and over many guys and girls think i am some sort of model or owner of something or some stupid shit along those lines so i totally hit rock bottom as i was totally head over heels in love with this girl and we were boyfriend girlfriend for three years and i remember thinking to myself it's obviously not the looks that keeps them very true i had some really good friends and my my college buddies that were really handsome and they would go out with the be- most beautiful girls and they were always getting jerked around and they wouldn't get very far the looks were great because the girl would be infatuated with their looks right away and then after two or three weeks they're getting friend zone they're getting blown off and even worse, when girlfriends went the distance and became girlfriends, they always cheated on these guys. It was the same pattern over and over and over. One of my buddies, his girlfriend was a really good friend of mine as well. She was former Miss Hawaiian Tropic. Beautiful girl. She cheated on him with his best friend. And then another girl when we were in our 20s, same thing. She was cheating on him with a bunch of guys. And yet he kept taking her back. He was too much of a poussoir to stand up for himself. And even though he had money and he had looks, he was a doormat when it became to women. And they treated him like it. I had become complacent, pussified, and a jealous jackass for two years as I learned from the book. Naturally, I was always good at hooking up or with one night stands, but not all relationships. Well, there's a St. Augustine quote. It's just posted my, my assistant quote, posted it to my Instagram recently. He said, He that is jealous is not in love. Within two days of my breakup, I found your work as everything else was shit and did not relate to me. So you know how serious I was when I heard you say, I'm Coach Corey Wayne. Eight days later, I had read the book three and a half times. Three and a half times in eight days. That is a guy that's made a serious fucking 
commitment. He hit rock bottom. He said, that's it. I'm done with this shit. No fucking more. People that lose weight, they get to that point where they're like, I'm tired of being overweight. This is it. I'm done with it. Never again. They realize they're in a shitty, unhappy relationship. They're like, that's it. Fucking, I'm out of here. No more. I will never tolerate somebody like this in my life ever again. And they just decide. That's what he did. He decided that his life was going to be different and not only did he decide, he took action. I couldn't stop reading it. 13 days after my breakup, my ex couldn't take it anymore and she said she wanted another try but I said I didn't want to date her or eventually go out again. That takes some serious balls. I can only offer friends with benefits. She asked, how can I forget her so fast? Well, it's really a belief system. He chose to assign a meaning to her or dating her and what dating her meant and therefore he just decided she was better as a friends with benefits and not girlfriend material. It takes some serious testicle fortitude to do that when you still love somebody and you still care about them but deep down you know it's foobard. It's fucked up beyond all recognition and you should not date them. Especially if you're dating somebody that is not – doesn't place a high value on loyalty, communication or commitment. In other words, they're only loyal as long as they're happy. If they're not happy, then they're like, hey, all's fair in love and war. And there are a lot of people out there that are ruthless like that. So if you're looking for somebody to be exclusive with you and be loyal, don't date somebody who has cheated on you or who has a habitual history of cheating. I took action with the new me, new knowledge, clothes, hairstyle, the whole nine yards and I set up a date within one week with a cute girl who was a seven on looks, quality, overall she was a seven and she messaged me after putting up an awesome picture on my Facebook. My goal and purpose was to show this girl the best time of her life, be sincerely interested, make her laugh and ask quality questions. That sounds like something I would say. But that's what happens when you read a book 15 times, in this case three and a half times in eight days, little things like that start to stick in your mind. Those values, those principles and you start to live and embody them because it's always top of mind consciousness. Three places a night as a secret and letting it unfold is a must. In other words, you go out on a date and you have three different places you go because most guys take, pick a girl up, they take her to dinner and then they take her home and that's it. Or a lot of guys take a girl to a movie and they take her home and they really not didn't get any time to talk except on the way to the movie and on the way back. But here by going – when you go to three different places, it gives the experience of three different dates in one evening. And it has the same psychological effect because remember, most women on average are going to sleep with a guy by the second or third date. It's just reality and you can speed that up if you read the book and you know the protocol. By the second place we went to, I knew I had to escalate things because all the signs were there. In other words, she's playing with her hair, touching his arm, doing those kinds of things that I talk about in the book. She started putting on chapstick and I waited for her to put it away and I said, you know, my lips are chapped too. Since you put some on, you need to get over here and kiss me right now. Look at that. I've, <laughs> I, I've probably heard a hundred different variations of that, that line <laughs> that's in my book. I, I can't wait. One of these days I'm going to get an email. He's like, I said that to a girl and she's like, you've read Corey Wayne's book, haven't you? You got that from Corey Wayne. Hasn't happened yet but I think it's pretty cool. And, and he says, of course, she went for it. As I looked over, some random guy said, hey, I want to kiss too. I laughed and told her, go ahead. You can give him one. Make his night. That's a beautiful response. That communicates you have no jealousy at all. You could take it or leave it. She laughed, hugged me and said, how about you take me somewhere more private? I took her home, two steps forward and one step back and you know the rest. Sounds like some indoor Olympics were happening. So predictable like the sun coming up in the east and setting in the west. It's beautiful. 
When you know that this is how it's going to happen, you have the same kind of confidence that James Bond has in all of his movies. He's never in a rush. He knows seduction is going to happen at some point. Even when the woman says, there's no way you're getting in my pants tonight, he just goes, that little smirk. It's like I've heard that a thousand times before. I was able to seduce this girl on her first night, textbook coach Corey Wayne. That's what happens when you follow instructions. That's what happens when you read the book three and a half times in eight days. That's somebody that is seriously fucking committed. In other words, life will never be the same again. He decided this and he took action. That's why it was so easy and effortless. It's like something right out of a fucking movie. Fast forward one year ahead, January 2016, 13 and three quarters times of the book being read, meeting 22 girls, going on dates with 16 of those girls. I kiss. So if you look at that, he met over the last year, he met 22 women that he really liked. In other words, they had what he was into. And out of those, 16 of those women he went out on dates with. And out of those 16 dates, 12 of them, he ended up kissing. So he went out on 12, 16 dates and four of them, there just wasn't chemistry. No kissing happened. He didn't like them, whatever. They didn't like him. doesn't matter. And out of those 12 that he kissed, he seduced nine of these girls. So that's about a little less than one a month. And the others either were structured or I saw them as way too needy or insecure. So most guys are never even thinking about these things. All they're thinking is she's hot, she's a perfect girl, they're projecting their fantasy onto her. And then six months later, when they're head over heels in love and have totally lost all emotional self-control, they realize that the chick is a fruit loop. Or six months of going out with her and her being structured and not getting anywhere, he finally says, I'm getting nowhere. Keep in mind, these girls were sevens or low eights but varied on their quality. I was just not feeling them as I did with my ex, but I knew I didn't want her anymore ever since the first month of our breakup. She wasn't a good quality girl and I knew I was a man of value and deserved to have someone who knocked my socks off in every way. So I was totally open to it and would remind myself of that every day. That's a really powerful statement. I think I'm going to have to read that one again. I knew I was a man of value and deserved to have someone who knocked my socks off in every way so I was totally open to it and would remind myself of that every day because there's going to be women that are going to come along and you're like, wow, she is really cool. Maybe she's good enough. And if you feel like that, if you settle with somebody like that, down the road you're going to be looking around and go, wow, that girl, she's hotter than my girlfriend. You're going to find women that you're more attracted to and that's not fun but when you're walking down the street with somebody that knocks your socks off. You feel like you're with the hottest woman on the planet and you don't want anybody else. Other women actually become less attractive in your eyes. And the girl that you're with becomes more attractive, even more than she really is to a degree because she's so awesome in every other way. I'm a 22-year-old Mexican-American semi-professional soccer player in California and I made 57000 last year in the job that I love at the moment. I started my own little company being a contractor that is also my passion and I just get people to do the jobs for me. I own a 2012 pickup truck, my passion project track car, two dirt bikes, one street bike, guns and I finally got the 10 that I've been dreaming about since my journey started. Great fucking job. Story ain't over yet. The first time I saw my 10, she came to my job and was talking to one of the employees. I told myself, what the fuck, man? This girl totally fits my list. Physical, she's a 9 and her quality is a 10. She's confident. She's sure of herself. She has good, healthy self-esteem. She's a happy, uplifting person, full of joy and laughter. She's 5'10", tall, blonde, drop-dead gorgeous, green eyes, fit and is a successful American girl. I knew it was time so I went up to her and straight looked into her eyes and said and this is his opener. Your eyes are fucking breathtaking. You take my damn breath away. You can feel that in this statement. There's heart in that. That's what moves a woman is he's moved by her. He's like oh. 
in other words, she can feel his authenticity. She can feel his attraction and he's not trying to be underhanded or fly under the radar or hide it. He's just putting it out there without any fear of the consequences. She was shocked. She blushed. She said thanks and she looked down. Right away, I knew she was submissive to me and I knew it was game on. I chatted with her for a little bit, totally bantered with her and saw all the good signs and said to her, you know what? I guess you're I guess you're pretty cool. Get my number down and give me a call when you are free. So he didn't even ask for her number. He told her to take his number. At first, I was scared out of my mind because I was doing the whole get my number down instead of me getting hers. But I said, quit being a bitch, treat all girls the same and stick with it. Six hours later, that same day, my 10 texted me saying, would you want to go on a hike with me this weekend? So now she's asking him out. I knew exactly what to do. Now what you gotta understand is women like this are not gonna ask out just any dude. They're not gonna take down just any guy's number. It's the complete vibe that he gave off. He showed her that he was worthy, that he wasn't a Fruit Loop, that he actually had his shit together and it's very rare when a woman like that encounters a man like that. So she knew she had somebody that she needed to value. And that's why she treated him that way. That's why she was happy to take his number down. I said, of course, let's meet up on Saturday, four o'clock at the first gas station to your right, getting off the 308 exit. Does that work for you? She replied, that totally works for me, sir. I showed up at our meeting spot 10 minutes early and she was there already. She was excited. That's another great thing. When you do the everything right, women show up on time or even a little earlier. Especially if they're really successful and they got their shit together. They're not going to be showing up a half hour late. They don't show up late for Brad Pitt. They show up early because they don't want to miss anything. When you act like Brad Pitt or James Bond would, the results are predictable. We have been on three dates over three weeks, period. I've stayed over at her house after all dates and indoor Olympics have happened as well. By the way, she has her own house. She's very successful and she made 207000 last year. So the girl's making about four times what he makes. Definitely sounds like someone at least financially is out of his league financially but really at the end of the day – It's just a state of mind and how you view yourself. Anyway, she has initiated 100% of the contact since the beginning. And when she texts me, she simply says, I want to see you. How free is your weekend? And she does it ahead of time. If I am free, I set up a surprise date and I wait to talk to her and see her. She doesn't blow up my phone and she even told me, I don't text you because I know you are busy and don't like to text. But I know when I see you, it makes up for it. You don't have to sit there and send a hundred fucking texts during the day. It's unnecessary. Women who are successful and who are dating successful men are respectful of that. They don't expect a guy to be available 24 fucking 7. Throughout the dates, these are the things she's told me so far. I haven't had a boyfriend for two years. I've dated... But they all seem to be intimidated by me. They're not cocky towards me and they ask for validation and approval. Talk before our first date and no one has ever asked me out that is so sure of themselves and set up such a definite date like you did. It was just like I talked about my English girlfriend when I met her. It's like the same exact experience I had with her. This guy was able to read the book and go out and duplicate that. Thank you for knowing yourself. These are things she said to him. I can't stop laughing and seeing all the quality I've wanted in a guy since high school years. This feels so effortless. I can't keep my hands off of you. Have you ever thought of what a Mexican and a full white person's kids would look like? I bet they would be cute. So she's already thinking about having his babies after three weeks. Thank you for making it to our dates. Thank you for making this a surprise and having everything planned out. I can't wait to show you places. 
I know you have options with girls and you are very selective and have them obsess over you. Let me take pictures of you to show my friends how handsome and cool you are. Thank you for not handing me over your balls and putting them in my bag. How many times have I done videos where guys do that? They put their balls in a box and they give them to the woman. Mommy, please make my decisions. I love how we think so alike. It's crazy how you are four years younger than me. So he's dating an older woman. And I've never felt like this for a guy in such a short time. Even though I've had attraction since the start. I love how you are so cocky, but it is not all about you. You can listen and understand me with no judgments. Right out of the book. When a woman feels heard and understood, the legs open. When she doesn't, the legs close. And obviously, the legs have been open since the first date. I mean, you can see how this builds your confidence as a man. The hottest woman on the planet to you and you're walking down the street with her and you're fucking each other's brains out. I mean, you're going to feel like you're on top of the world when these things start happening to you on a regular basis. More and more, I can't get enough of her, but one thing I will tell you is I don't have an attached feeling for her and I'm totally okay if it doesn't work out. At the end of the day, I know it is only a matter of time until I find someone amazing like her again and I wouldn't want to stop her from finding someone who really deserves her because of my fears of finding someone else. Now that's an alpha male statement. Good job, dude. Thank you, boss. You will soon see another donation from me. Well, I always appreciate donations. And if you're so inclined, you can go to my website and click on the toolbar at the bottom of any page and just hit the donate button. I will continue to watch your videos, share your work, and help people with their problems and send them your way, as always. I wish I could write on and on about my success. I can't thank you enough. Well, thanks for listening. Thanks for following instructions. And thanks for being a great example because you just inspire tens of thousands of men and women all over the world to be more like you. So great fucking job. So if you'd like to get my help personally, go to my website, click the products tab at the top of your screen on any page and follow the instructions for booking whichever coaching option works best for you. And if you haven't got the audio version of my book yet, it's available on iTunes as well as audible.com. And if you sign up for an audible.com membership, you can actually get my audio book totally for free. It's a great fucking deal. And I will talk to you soon.